Hello everyone, this is the great Lord and Master, Osirod, the Eternal. For what should just be a fun, quick video, this is just sort of a loose hypothesis of how a being could travel interstellarly in a practical way. And the reason I say practical way is because, um, you know, the nearest star to us is like measured in light years away. I mean, it, it, it would just take an entire lifetime to get to any anywhere, you know, in an analog way, like me getting into a spaceship and just flying there, it would take forever. So, and there's a lot of other theories of how a being could travel um, interstellarly. You know, there's some wormhole ideas. There's a lot of other ones, but this is a sort of just a fun idea that I had that I've been meaning to get out there. I just haven't, you know. I've, I've actually talked about this on a couple of uh, podcasts with other people. As a matter of fact, one of those podcasts is with uh, Sean Bond and uh, Silver Cord Spiritual Science. I made two videos with him, and uh, I'll post those videos in the uh, description below. You can go and watch those. They're pretty, pretty good videos. There's a, I got a lot of positive response from them. So, but this, but this uh, is, okay, this is, these are just. Uh, basically uh, visual aids basically just to help the story flow of what I'm getting at. Um, all right, what you have here is a source star, this would be our sun, and this other star here would be just another star. And that is how you would travel interstellarly using stargates. Um, and I actually got this idea, it sort of helped uh, blossom from the book uh, Secret of the Dark Stars by Anton Parker, which is a really good book that is sort of like a, uh, uh, a, a different take on the uh, Anunnaki story. And that particular book deals with the pre-Earth um, uh, things that went on, and it sort of explains why there's such a rift between men and women, and especially in Abrahamism and why that has developed and why that is what it is and why the Abraham has had such an animosity towards women is sort of laid out in that book. But uh, traveling interstellarly, so what, what you would do, now this is how you would do it artificially, this is how you would travel inter interstellarly in an artificial manner because it's not natural for us as beings to travel anywhere to other star systems because we don't need to do that. You know, the way we would do it naturally is if we if we wanted to go to a different star system, we would die and then be reborn in a body someplace else. But the idea is to do that with the body you have. So what you would do is you you would fly a spacecraft that is able to sustain your life, okay? And what you would do is you would fly it into the sun. And what you would do is you would fucking die. You would die. You would vaporize in the star. And then what you would do is this is uh, your data would be recorded by the star. Probably an artificial device would record the data. It would send the data via the Birkeland current that connects the stars, and then the energy uh, from the uh, from the star that you're going to would use the um, matter of the star to re constitute a body using the data that was recorded on the first star. And then it would just basically 3D print another body exactly as it was. So to travel inter interstellarly, you would basically, it's basically you would, it would be like a giant 3D printing operation. So you would uh, be in the craft, you would fly into the star, and then you would vaporize. Your data would be recorded it would be sent down the Birkeland current. It would, it would be um, then the the star in the area you want to go would reconstitute your body and copy it exactly as it was, and you would emerge with a brand new body. That was that is an exact carbon copy of the body that was destroyed in this star, and to do that. And the reason I use this model or came up with this idea is because it accounts for the matter of the body. Because to travel interdimensionally or using wormhole ideas or any of this, 
you have to account for the physical body. You can't just ignore that. You can't just ignore the matter that is this body because it, it, this body needs constant attention. It needs, it needs, you know, con that's why, it, you know, that's probably one of the reasons why they say that this world is a prison. Well, it's not really a prison, but you are bound to your body. So your body is important. And if, it, if it's deprived of oxygen or anything, it's going to die really, really fast. Even if it's, you know, put in an atmosphere that's not suited to it, it's going to die. I mean, you know, we as beings operate in a really tight window as far as what's acceptable for to sustain life, you know. Like, you know, pressures, temperature, you know, all kinds of things have to be perfect for us, for this body to live here. And if you disrupt that by jumping into some void space, your body's just going to explode or whatever. Either implode, explode, vaporize, burn, or some other fucking thing is going to happen to it. It's not going to be pleasant or f at all. So you have to account for the physical body in this, and this exact, and this accounts for the matter that is in your body. So when you fly into the star, and the data gets recorded, probably by artificial means, and then you send the data stream down the Birkeland current, and that could, in theory, be instantaneous too. I mean, you could, in theory, travel fucking thousands or billions of light years in the blink of an eye. And then re-emerge in the uh, destination star when the prob again probably using artificial means would uh, 3D print your body and it would have to happen fast enough for your body to not miss a beat. You know what I mean? Because all the, again all the pressures you know, your your blood operates at a certain pressure. All these things operate on certain pressures in temperatures and all that. So it would have to basically be reanimated fast enough so it wouldn't disrupt the flow and the pressures of your body at all. And the other thing that would have to happen to that is you would have to be able to carry your um, you have, you'd have to be able to carry your identity through death. You would have to be able to go into the world um, beyond this life maintain your mind and your sense of self and then basically what you do is once your body dies here and the data goes through to the next star your soul just reanimates the body so basically you're just soul jumping from one body to another so uh, when this body reemerges your soul basically just jumps right back into the body and takes over as if it didn't miss a beat so it, so what what would actually happen is you would be in a, an entirely brand new body that was just basically copied from the source star here using artificial means. And the reason I keep saying artificial means is because the way nature does this process is through natural death. So if we live on Earth, right, and, and if we want to, our soul or higher self wants to go live someplace else, we just die. And then our soul does whatever it does. It uh, reanimates into another body. And then we're born, we live, and then we die again. And that's how nature does it. And nature may even use stargates like the sun. It's been theorized by you know, a few people that the sun is a stargate. You know, that the sun is a two-way stream. There's even been reports of fleets of spacecraft being seen around the sun. I, yeah, I, I know a lot of that could just be bullshit. But, but still, there are people who say it, and there could be some truth to it, who knows. But, so it's even been, you know, partially that the sun is a stargate. And this even goes to uh, different ideas of, 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 like, hollow earth. A hollow earth, I mean, there's been some uh, respectable people who s would swear to you that the earth is hollow, and that the earth actually does have a central sun, and that could be a smaller stargate. And even human beings, in theory, could be just you know, have the stargate potential within themselves. You wouldn't necessarily have to use stars to do this. Um, and as a matter of fact, a source star, you wouldn't necessarily have to fly into the sun at, at the source star either. I mean, you could just do it, I mean, you basically just die, you know, you know, <laughs> I know it's crazy talking talk about like this, but, but basically you could die in your body, you know, 
and then, re and then, but the reason I do use the star analogy is because it, it accounts for the data. So once your body vaporizes into the star, the physical material that was your body is resided in the star. So there is no loss of matter. And then this, st this star has the matter in it that was your body, and it just, the data that was your body is just copied, and then the matter of this uh, star uses the matter that is there to reanimate a new body or 3D print a new body. So there is no loss of matter. This is the biggest uh, fundamental uh, principle about this idea is that the, it, there is no loss of matter and this travel method accounts for the matter of your body because you have to account for that. You can't just say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll fucking disappear into a wormhole and reappear someplace else or whatever. or I'll just, or, or this body will just disappear and then reappear somewhere else with no explanation. I mean, you have to account for the physical matter that is your body. You can't just ignore that. that that's real. That has to be accounted for. So, uh, so this has to be accounted for. And, and actually, we see, you know, when it comes to the idea of stars connect, being connected by Birkeland currents and stuff like that, that's actually, you know, the, the, this is proven, this has been proven in actual science lately, you know, the star, there are Birkeland currents and they got, got connect stars, and the Earth is connected to the Sun via Birkeland currents, and the human body could even be connected to the Earth via Birkeland currents, but we may just call that an, an aura, you know, there's people who are out there who claim they can see the human aura, and this is what this is here, sort of like an aura, well that aura could, in theory, just be a Birkeland current that connects to the central sun inside the Earth. Because the aura, you know, most people are standing on Earth, you know, when the auras are red, so there's going to be a sheet, an you know, a thing around you, like a glowing fucking aura, whatever that is, and that could be plasma. And that aura could, it could be connected to the central sun inside the Earth, if that's legitimate. I mean, uh, the idea of hollow Earth I know on the surface it sounds ridiculous, but I mean it, it's not as far-fetched as people would have you believe. It could be true. And as a matter of fact, in the model of uh, the uh, 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 electric universe, the planets are likely hollow in that model anyway. I mean, there's a lot of research being done on that, but in that model the planets are likely hollow. And it's been shown that the moon is probably hollow. And the Earth could very well be hollow. Uh, Jupiter is likely hollow. Saturn is likely hollow. Uh, there's a lot that goes on with this. But uh, if that's true, if that's true, and there is an actual central sun in here, then uh, our auras could connect to that. And there's also been talk of you know people who uh, astral project. There's a thing called the silver cord. You know people talk of seeing a silver cord connected from their astral body to their sleeping body, well that, that silver cord could be a plasma conduit or it could be, it could be a plasma conduit which would be a Birkeland current. So this fucking silver cord that people talk about could actually just be a Birkeland current connecting to, you know I mean, uh, either your body or whatever it is, but so in, in your astral body could in theory just be a plasma body. I mean, plasma is something that is, uh, needs to be looked at uh, a lot, and it, it, it is being looked at a lot closer, but the Birkeland currents are basically plasma filaments that connect stars in space, is what they are. And the reason why, and you don't see them all the time, because the, most of the time they're invisible, but they do glow sometimes, and that's how you detect them. And it's also been uh, theorized that the... Uh, like on this planet Earth, the uh, Northern Lights or the uh, the uh, Aurora Borealis is the Birkeland current. Our plasma is is the plasma um, current in its glow mode. Basically, that's what that is. You know. So there's a lot to, to go, sort of going on with this. But again, this is just a this is just fun. I mean, I'm, I'm not absolutely affirming any of this is true. This is just sort of an idea that I had. It's uh, just sort of fun. It's all. It's it's just, you know, an avenue for thought, you know, that's all. But so, yeah, so the source star 
would be what you fly into. Your body is destroyed and vaporized here. The matter is reabsorbed by the star. The data in the data only is sent down the Birkeland current. And the destination star reconstitutes your body using the matter of the star or the electricity, which is what the Birkeland current is a conduit for, uh, electricity. So it just takes the electricity and re uses the energy of that electricity and reconstitutes your body as if it were a 3D printer and then that's how you travel interstellarly. And uh, the aura could be a Birkeland current that connects to the central sun. Uh, the silver cord in astral projection could be a plasma Birkeland current that's, con that's only visible, that shows up via the astral world and all that. So. That is how you would travel interstellarly. But again, I just want to know, this is only a fun idea. It doesn't mean it's true. It's just something I wanted to get out there because it's fun at all. So thank you and namaste.